Hello everyone, I am happy to interact with you through this video. I am Dr. Soundara Raj. These are all a few details related to my career. After you watch the full video, if you really like the video and find the video beneficial to you, give a like to the video and do subscribe my channel so that you can get the updates of the new videos which I will be releasing. Through this video, I am going to take you through the new product development process. I will explain in detail the steps to be followed for a new product before it enters into the market. Regarding the steps in new product development process, there are 8 steps every product passes through in its development. What are all those steps? Number 1. Idea generation. 2. Idea screening. 3. Concept development and testing. 4. Marketing strategy development. 5. Business analysis. 6. Product development. 7. Test marketing. And the last stage is nothing but commercialization. We will get into the details of every step. The first step, idea generation. It refers to the systematic search for new product ideas. A company typically generates hundreds and thousands of ideas in order to find a good ones at the end. Due to the changing needs and preferences of consumers in every product market of the globalized village, due to the changes that are taken place are forced from the different elements of the business environment or marketing environment specifically, we find some of the existing products reach the end of their lifetime. Either to replace those products which reach the end of their lifetime or to add a couple of more products to the existing list of products a company manufactures and markets. Every successful company brings out a few new products every year. To bring out the new products or new services, the starting point is nothing but generating wonderful business or product ideas. When they generate hundreds and thousands of ideas, they don't convert all those ideas into products. It may not be feasible for a company to convert all the new product ideas into meaningful products. From the list of the thousands of ideas, a successful company might choose a few good ones which could be further processed and finally come out with wonderful new products which would be preferred by the customers. For example, IBM's Innovative Jam. This is a program, a kind of suggestion box in which the company invited IBM and customer employees worldwide to submit ideas for new products and services. They even generated some 46,000 ideas from 150,000 people in more than 160 countries over just three days. This is a Himalayan task achieved by the company within three days through a wonderful program named IBM Innovative Jam. IBM finally whittled down this surge of ideas to only 10 products or businesses and services that it planned to develop. Major sources of new product ideas include 1. Internal sources such as the research and development department of the company, two, top management, and three, employees. The most important internal source of new product ideas. Then, second category of sources of new product ideas is named to be external sources of new product ideas, such as customers, competitors, distributors, suppliers, and others. Let us get into the details of the internal source of ideas. Using internal sources, the company can find new ideas through formal research and development. However, in one survey which was conducted among 750 global CEOs from popular companies of the world, they reported that only 14% of their innovation or innovative ideas came from traditional research and development. Instead, 41% said employees and 36% said customers. Obviously, the greatest source for new product ideas is your employees. Try to make use of the brain of your employees. Many of the wonderful new product ideas will be shared by your employees at free of cost. Why don't you make use of them to take the business organization to the next level along with your employees. And the next source what they said for 36% is a customers. They are the ultimate beneficiaries. The customers might come out with wonderful new product ideas and new service ideas. You can get them sometimes at free of cost or you can pay them or you can honor them for suggesting 
good new product ideas based on which you can come out with beneficial marketing offers to the consuming public. Thus, companies can pick the brain of employees from executives to scientists, engineers and manufacturing staff to salespeople and even the top management. Cisco has got a program named iZone, Innovative Zone and Samsung's Value Innovation Program. Very good examples for the internal source of ideas. They are good examples for a company to generate new product ideas from its employees. New product ideas can also be originated from the intuition of the top management. Example, Tata Nano. It was given birth out of the intuition of uh, the great person Ratan Tata. He wanted to give a budget car for a middle class family of four members husband and wife and two children. He didn't want such a family to have a very dangerous travel in a scooter or bikes. This is a great idea behind the birth of Tata Nano, a budget car for a middle class family brought out by Tata. External source of ideas. Companies can also obtain good new product ideas from any number of external sources such as distributors, suppliers, competitors, and customers. Distributors and suppliers, they deal with your product. At times, they also deal with other products in the market. Out of their expertise, they could also come out with wonderful new product ideas. The new product ideas could be for a totally, totally a new product or for adding few more features with our existing product to make it as a new one. Or they may suggest better ideas for repositioning an existing brand by virtue of that, the brand which is going to be repositioned is going to be understood or received as a new product by the customers. Then competitors, do not underestimate your competitors. I would suggest that better you learn from your competitors. Respect your competitors. You always be like a watchdog. A marketer should play the role of a watchdog to find out what's happening with the competition and try to understand the competitive strategies. For example, I think of a company in this situation, Mitsubishi. It is a company which has learned quite a lot from its competitors in the automobile market of the world. That's nothing wrong. You should not copy the ideas of the competitors, but Nothing wrong in learning from the competitors either directly or indirectly. Customers, they are another biggest blessing for the company who could come out with wonderful new product ideas related to your existing product market, existing product lines or about new product lines which you never thought of. But it's possible for you to get into such new product lines which could be suggested by the customers. Now let's look at what is said by few great personalities in the business world of the global village Michael Dell I quote what he said we are our best when we are hearing directly from customers he is the right person who has understood the value of ideas which are brought out by the customers and that is why he has rightly said we are our best we can reach our best only when we are hearing directly from our customers about the quality of the product about the changes to be brought out in our product about the new products which we can bring out to the market for the benefit of the customers and so on. Steve Jobs, what he said, I quote, You can't ask people what they want if it's around the next corner. He means that you can't always rely completely upon what is said by the customers. It may not be possible for the consumers to come out with wonderful ideas if you are dealing with the products which are very highly technical or very highly complicated technologically, in such a case, you can't rely completely upon the ideas given by your customers. You can listen to them, but you can't fully rely upon those people to get new product ideas. This is what suggested by Steve Jobs. An innovation consultant has also opined like merely giving people what they want is not always enough. That is very, very true. If you give people what they exactly want from you, I am sure you can only satisfy them. You cannot go ahead of your competition to delight your customers. Only if you delight your customers, they turn out to be opinion leaders and try to promote your market offerings at free of cost. So if you want every customer of your company to turn into be an opinion leader, you take the priority of delighting the customers by offering them value along with your marketing offer. 
for doing so you surprise the customers they want something that's better that they imagine something that stretches them in what they like this is what said by the innovation consultant the second step to be followed in developing new product is nothing but idea screening the purpose of idea generation is to generate larger number of ideas the purpose of the succeeding stages in the new product development process is to reduce that number we also discussed about ibm's program the innovative jam through which it generated more than 46000 ideas within 3 days from the participants in the program but finally it opted for only the 10 ideas which it converted into products and businesses that's what the story about the first idea reducing stage is idea screening which helps spark good ideas and drop the non suitable ones as soon as possible i don't say poor ideas to be dropped there could be certain ideas which may not be suitable for your organization to develop as a new product but they might be more suitable for other companies so it is apt to say non suitable ideas instead of uh, saying poor ideas as the product development costs rise greatly in later stages companies want to go ahead only with the product ideas that will turn into profitable products for them it's not affordable for any company for that matter to convert all new product ideas into products or to further process them through the new product development process not affordable for any company for that matter in the global village therefore it is the job of the companies to meticulously screen the received ideas and select the good ones which could be processed further or which could be taken up further one marketing expert proposes an rww screening framework that asks three questions one is it real before you take a particular idea to the next stage while you screen it you screen every idea with the screening framework suggested by this particular expert what is the meaning of is it real is there a real need for the product among the customers before you move an idea from the second step to the third step you should get proper answer for this question what is that is it really necessary for converting this idea into a product will it go to fulfill the needs and wants of the customers that's what about is it real is there a need for this particular idea to be converted into a product the second question can be win that means does the product offer a sustainable competitive advantage will the product have a good answer for the question of customers that why should we buy your brand will it have a greater competitive advantage if the product which you develop using an idea is going to have a good competitive advantage a good usp i am sure it is going to get the answer of yes for this question the third question is it worth doing does the product set the company's overall growth strategy does it offer sufficient profit potential making profit is very very important what is the real purpose of bringing out a new product of course it is to fulfill the requirements of the customers needs and wants of the customers through that what do you want to achieve you want to achieve the financial objectives of the company will it be possible for you to achieve the financial objectives of the company through the product which you develop based on an idea if you get yes for all these three questions you can take that particular idea to the further stages in the development process the third step in the new product development process is concept development and testing an attractive idea must be developed into a product concept it is important to distinguish between a product idea a product concept and a product image what is the meaning of a product idea it is an idea for a possible product that the company can see itself offering to the market will it be possible for a company to convert an idea into a product this should be seen by the company from the view point of the market and the next one is about product concept which is nothing but a detailed version of the product idea stated in meaningful consumer terms can this new idea be explained in such a way that consumers can understand what part it is entered into the market what part it is targeted upon them that's what about the second one the third one is about product image it is a way 
consumers perceive an actual or potential product how will the consumers understand accept or perceive the new product which you are going to develop based on a particular product idea this is what about the product image what type of image this particular product is going to yearn in the minds of the customers the next one is about concept testing it comes for testing new product concepts with a group of target customers in this stage companies normally select the sample group of customers to whom they explain about the idea of the new product either with a clear description or with a picture the sample customers are explained thoroughly about the new product after they get exposed to the explanation given by the company personnel they are asked to answer a set of questions if the company gets positive responses for the set of questions from the sample customers about the new product idea which has been explained to them the company can take the idea further to the remaining stages of the new product development the fourth step in the new product development process is marketing strategy development it refers to designing an initial marketing strategy for a new product based on the product concept the marketing strategy statement consists of three parts the first part describes the target market if this idea is converted into a product who will be the target consumers the plan value proposition for the product which will be developed based on this idea the sales the market share and profit goals for the first few years this is what you can find in the first part of marketing strategy statement second part outlines the product's plan price distribution and marketing budget for the first year and the third part describes the plan long term sales this is what going to be the cost volume profit analysis for the new product which you are going to develop based on the given idea the fifth step in the development process of a new product is business analysis once a company has decided on its product concept and marketing strategy it can evaluate the business attractiveness of the proposal business analysis involves a review of the sales cost and profit projection for the new product to find out whether they satisfy the company's objectives specifically its financial objectives the company then uses the sales and cost figures to analyze the new products financial attractiveness in the entire market the sixth step in the development process of a new product is product development until the previous step of business analysis for many new product concepts the product may have existed only as a word description or a drawing or perhaps a crude mock up if the product concept passes the business test it moves into the product development here only you involve in developing the actual product a model of the product or at least a prototype of the product here the research and development department or engineering department develops the product concept into physical product this step will really show whether the product idea can be turned into a workable product or not this is where you check so far the idea which you conceptualized is now given a physical form this is a difficult task here only the idea is given physical form the physical attributes are given to the product and it becomes a product you can see this is how a product is going to come out if at all feasible the research and development department will develop and test one or more physical versions of the product concept it hopes to design a prototype that will satisfy and excite consumers and that can be produced very quickly and at budgeted cost often products undergo rigorous test to make sure that they perform safely and effectively or that consumers will find value in them companies can do their own product testing or they can go for outsourcing the testing for example gillet does its own product testing with the support of its employee volunteers who come to office during the particular span of time unshaven and assist the company in testing the quality of its new product they will be guided by the technical experts to use the new products after using the products their opinion or their ideas about the new products 
will be collected by the technical experts and that would be incorporated meticulously in modifying the new product before it gets into the next stage of its development process. Test marketing. This stage of new product development facilitates the company to test its product and marketing program in realistic market settings. Test marketing gives a marketer an experience with marketing the product before going to the great expense of full introduction. Instead of rushing to take the product to the final consumers in the open market, it is good to make it undergo a test with a small segment of people in a controlled or simulated market environment. If the results are positive, then you can produce a product in large quantity which could be taken over to the entire market. It lets the company test the product and its entire marketing program, targeting and positioning strategy, advertising, distribution, pricing, branding, packaging and budget levels. Although test marketing costs can be high, they are often small when compared with the cost of making a major mistake of launching an inappropriate product into the market directly. When using test marketing, consumer product companies usually choose one of the following three approaches. They are standard test market, controlled test markets and simulated test markets. What is the meaning of standard test markets? Using this method, the company finds a small number of representative test cities in a country's market, conducts a full marketing campaign in these cities and uses store audits, consumer and distributed service and other measures to gauge product performance in the particular test markets. The results are used to forecast national sales and profits, discover potential product problems and fine tune the marketing program. In addition to the advantages, a company could enjoy using standard test market. There are certain limitations associated with this particular approach of test marketing. They are costlier. They are time consuming. You can't do test marketing of a product in a given city or given cities of a country's market within a month or so. You have to wait. It might take six months or one year also. It's easy for competitors also to copy before you come out with the final product and launch it in the entire market. Watching the progress of the new product which you are testing in the given cities Competitors could copy your new product and come out with the whole launching in the entire market. So there is a risk also. Or they can develop defensive strategies for their existing products. Or they can cut down their prices for the products so that our product may not be allowed to perform well in the test market cities. Or they can increase their promotion to put down the performance of our new product or even they can attempt to buy the new product. What about the second approach of a test marketing? Controlled test market. Several firms keep controlled panels of stores that have agreed to carry new products for a fee. Controlled test marketing systems such as AC Nielsen Scan Track and Information Resources, Inks IRA Behavior Scan Track Individual Consumer Behavior for new products from the television set to the checkout counter. Detailed scanner information on each consumer's purchases is sped into a central computer where it is combined with the consumer's demographic and TV viewing and reported daily. So in the controlled supermarkets or the test markets, you can very well study about the behavior of consumers using surveillance. You can very well get the reasons why the consumers have bought your new product which is kept along with the other products in the controlled supermarkets or why they have not opted for your product. So all this information could be collected from the customers who come out after billing whatever they have bought in the controlled supermarkets. And the third approach of test marketing is simulated test market. Instead of going to the physical real environment of testing your product in given cities or testing your product in controlled supermarkets or hypermarkets, you can create a simulated environment wherein you make your product, your marketing programs, your promotional strategies to which a selected group of customers, target customers get exposed. And after completing the process, you can give them a sum of money 
which they can make you to do shopping in a laboratory or a real store which you created and find out how many of those selected target customers to whom your new product has been explained along with other products or whom the marketing programs of your new products were explained properly through different marketing communication and find out the reason why some of them have bought the product or many of them have bought a product or the reason why they have not responded to your product you collect such information from the selected customers and this is a way by which you can do testing of your new product in the simulated test market approach the last stage in the new product development process is commercialization there are products miserably fail in the market not because they are not of good quality not because they are not rightly priced not because they have not identified the target consumers properly they have done everything correctly but they fail to take care of the last step very systematically what is that meaning of commercialization commercialization explains how to introduce a product what is the time of introducing a product is it good for a new soft drink to be launched during a winter season no it is not correct so the timing of launching where to launch how to launch a product by whom it should be launched these questions are to be properly answered through the commercialization process with that i wind up i hope i have explained all the eight stages every new product passes through in its development process thanks for watching this video if you like the video give a like to the video and do subscribe my channel so that you get updates of the new videos which i will be releasing